this is just kind of a quick recap of uh, a little bit of progress that we made and uh, what we've gone through through the conceptual design process. process. It's important to us, um, you know, at Populous, we're, we're very adamant about mining information, especially within the convention industry and uh, convention and meeting industry. And we've been, um, you know, using this data since about 2003, and we have about 10 years of, of backlog um, kind of experience audits on uh, the future of the convention industry. And, uh, you know, we've gone from more of a facility um, oriented design, you know, making sure the building works to a more hospitality and experiential focus. So these, uh, these, uh, you know, descriptors on your right, those are, those are the main focuses of how we're going to really deliver a first class, um, hospitable, experiential experience uh, in the convention center. Um, you know, through our research, specifically for this project, we thought it was important to really use some case studies of some premier convention centers, um, not only in the United States, but also around the globe. And these are facilities that we, uh, we see that the Oklahoma City Convention Center is going to be, you know, competitors and direct comparisons to. And, uh, you know, there's a few aspects of these that we think are important to, uh, to take into consideration for the design of this. And obviously a unique identity, scale, um, flexibility and adaptability, technology, um, a new construction. It's unique that we have a new building here in Oklahoma City. We need to use that uh, to our advantage. Obviously high design and then uh, urban integration. So these are all um, very important things that, we, that we've worked on. Um, again, all over the world, and we, we fully plan on incorporating these into the, the design of this facility. This is a, a, little bit of, a little bit of history of how we got to where we're at today. This was a cold day in December. We, we printed out some 3D models, and we actually went through about 40 or 50 um, scale comparisons and size studies on how we could fit this building on the site. Those options then led to these eight options, and this is when we started to interact with our MAPS team and uh, our subcommittee and some various other um, uh, groups around the city. So we led uh, to these eight options. We, we broke them down into functionality, rearrange, and organize. And these eight options then led to these three options. And this was about two months ago. We had panorama, city view, and park view. These options were trying to capitalize on some of the key relationships to downtown, to the park, to the arena, and to any kind of future expansion that we have for the facility. And we ended on our final scheme, which is a, a hybrid of all these. We're still early on in the design phase, and this is a test fit. This is a costing exercise to make sure that the program that we're trying to deliver is within budget and will fit within the desired um, you know, land requirements. So it would be really good just to kind of readdress uh, what we're doing with the site. The key here is to allow the building to fit, we're going to have to move Broadway to about 200 feet to the east going to allow the appropriate square footage and acreage to allow the building to sit along Robinson in between uh, 4th Street and 6th Street. Streetcar obviously is going to be extremely important for the user experience. As we you know, experience the new park, walk to the front door of the convention center, and we want to make sure that that experience is first class. So right now where the streetcar is sited, we have about an 800 foot walk. Um, past the potential new hotel development to the front door of the convention center adjacent to the, the park plaza on the northwest corner, uh, northeast corner of the uh, of uh, Robinson and uh, the Oklahoma Boulevard. So making sure that that is a comfortable, uh, comfortable walk, a first class experience. So we've been tasked with uh, some, some parking studies. We're about midway through this parking study right now um, on how many cars we can fit within the footprint of the convention center site. Um, off the cuff, we, uh, we have ability for approximately 750 cars um, on grade and the potential for um, approximately 800 cars, 780 to 800 cars um, above or below or around the convention center. Um, so we're still working on that, but knowing that parking will be a, an integral part of how uh, people access this facility. The relationship to the park, uh, we always joke at Populous, in every project we ever do, um, outdoor space is a key value and all facilities are chomping at the bit to have ample outdoor space to host events, to get people outside for health and wellness reasons, exposure to daylight. And what we have here um, in Oklahoma City, to your guys' credit, is that we have an ideal situation with this relationship to the park. So now we'll get into uh, the building layout a little bit. Um, currently we're still holding the full program, the 200,000 square foot exhibit hall, uh, the 45,000 square foot of flexible meeting space, and then the 30,000 square foot ballroom. So as it stands right now, we are confident that 
we can deliver this whole program within the project budget. So the building is broken up on the three and a half levels or four levels. We have a ground level, which is for our exhibit hall. We have our meeting room level one, which is fully, um, uh, fully divided up with flexible meeting space. We have meeting room level two, which you'll see is a, is a unique feature of this facility. And then we have our ballroom level, which is what we're really calling the ballroom experience. And in this new section, you can see how the building really starts to divide, uh, starts to stack up on a uh, east-west um, section. So in the faint yellow, you can see the exhibit hall to the right. You see the ground level. You see that first meeting room level, which is approximately 26 feet in the air. And then you see the second meeting room level and the ballroom level as it stacks on top of that meeting room level and starts to cantilever over the new Robinson experience. So those moves right there are already starting to provide us that overhang and that architectural protection that we need from that western sun. On the ground level, we have three entries, similar to those entries that I described earlier with the relationship to the park. So this northwest entry, uh, you can see the images to the right. We understand that this is a great opportunity to provide that architectural statement um, for visitors that are coming to Oklahoma City for the first time and arriving for cab, or streetcar, or walking from the hotel. This will be the entry that has a lot of prominence, and we understand that this could be the front door for the facility for a significant portion of guests. This facility will not be successful if the loading dock and the service and the loading do not function. So we've paid great attention on designing a functional facility from the loading dock inward and how we get goods from the front of the building to the back of the building. This is our second level of meeting rooms. Uh, it's about 26 feet in the air. Um, we had some really great uh, conversation with our subcommittee over the past uh, few months on how we can really maximize this meeting room experience. So in this slide specifically, we, we call it let the light in. Um, as I said earlier, there's, there's so many experiences where you're sitting in a meeting room with um, no access to natural light, uh, no access to the outdoors. And so what we're trying to do here is to pull some of these meeting rooms to the front of the facility allow them access to the park, to the downtown views, to the open air. Obviously, the appropriate shading mechanisms will be put in place to allow these rooms to have blackout conditions. As we move forward in design, it's going to be extremely important for us to start to maximize this exposure to the park, the city, and the western facade. When we talk about flexibility, it's pretty simple. It's just kind of allowing uh, your rooms to grow and shrink according to the event that's planned for the, the week or the day or however long. So, for example, on this first level, we start to introduce that first level of flexibility, um, allowing two rooms to grow from 3,600 square feet, or sorry, shrink from 3,600 square feet down to 1,800 square feet. This elevated bridge connection, we understand that it should be more than just a gerbil tube, a nondescript connection to the hotel. Needs to be beautiful, the potential for some program, maybe a restaurant or a cafe, maybe even leasable space up there, and provide that cohesive experience from the hotel to the bridge to the convention center. We really want it to read as one cohesive first class experience. So now we're up on the third level. This is our second meeting room mezzanine. We're about 56 feet in the air, or sorry, 48 feet in the air in this level. Um, this is where we really start to dive into the flexibility of the facility. So what we've done is we've provided two 10,000 square foot, what we're calling junior ballrooms. Um, and what that does is it gives you the flexibility to have two rooms of 10,000 square feet, or you can fully demise those rooms into four rooms of 1,800 square feet with their own dedicated pre-function and exiting. Just above that level, we have what is, I think, the most important aspect of this facility, and it is the, uh, the ballroom experience. Um, Again, we don't want this ballroom to become a black box that just kind of sits on top of the convention center. Um, this is our chance for that giant architectural civic statement. And we want to add an extreme level of flexibility and uniqueness to this ballroom with the ability to open up those front doors of the ballroom and experience that 10,000 square foot pre-function and then continue that experience onto a 6,000 square foot outdoor terrace. The ballroom is planned as 30,000 square feet the way that we imagine it is that the ballroom experience as a whole can transform into a 46,000 square foot experience that is leasable, provides you the adequate um, experience and views to the park, to the downtown corridor. It can really start to be that, that unique um, uh, event space that the city really um, strives to want or need.
expansion is, is extremely important. We don't know exactly what the market is going to be like in 10, 15, 20 years, but just providing uh, that level of uh, adaptability uh, in the convention center so that when the city does grow and does feel the need to expand, um, the expansion is, is can be done cheaply and uh, uh, cost effectively um, as possible. We understand that there's going to be vehicular drop-offs, meeting space, dining and retail, um, you know, public public areas, convention center specific areas, all this stuff is going to be on our site. And how we really start to maximize and design this to be a cohesive plan is going to be important as we move forward.